Welcome and hello um, to the Wikimedia Sound Logo Project Roundtable uh, and q and I'm saying hi from windy, cold, but very sunny Johannesburg. My name is Matoto Mazzadella. I'm a senior manager in the communications department of the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I'm joined by my colleague Taz. Taz, can you introduce yourself, please? Hello. Um, hello from a very hot and sticky London. Um, my name is Taz Elias. I'm the brand collaborations lead uh, at the foundation. Um, I'm Matoto's colleague in the brand studio, and I am working with Matoto on the sound and music aspect of this contest. So if you're here today, you're probably curious to learn more about the Sound Logo project and contest. Um, it's a project to co-create um, a sound for Wikimedia's uh, knowledge and content with you, our volunteer communities, and pretty much any free knowledge enthusiast around the world. Um, we'll tell you more about the details of this project in this session, uh, giving you a project overview and the people behind it. Um, we'll also show you the many ways you can get involved and leave ample time at the end um, to cover off any questions that you may have uh, after listening to the session. And so, um, to begin with the project overview, um, we know um, that many people around the world are seeking knowledge and information, and they're doing so increasingly using voice assistants from their laptops or their phones using applications like Siri and Alexa and many, many more. Um, this is hardly new information. We're entering the internet of things. Our content, Wikimedia content, uh, is also on audio devices, uh, and it's also increasingly available around the world. Unfortunately, right now, um, this content is often not identified. Um, and so the listener probably doesn't know this content is coming from a Wikimedia project. So a sound logo in brief is a collection of sounds such as a short, uh, you know, mnemonic, uh, usually one to four seconds long. Um, and the idea is that this little mnemonic would uh, be played on in an audio interface when content from Wikimedia is served. Um, it's a, a device that is very similar to the well-known Tadam that Netflix uses um, and the Nokia sounds for those who were there in the 90s. A sound logo offers us, Wikimedia, very many new ways um, to be identified in the knowledge ecosystem um, through audio interfaces. And so the team behind the sound logo project is a big collaboration. Um, we are incredibly happy to have um, a global set of community liaisons. I think they're on the call today. Um, and um, we also have staff from the foundation uh, who are working on the project in various capacities, as well as um, supporters and advisors from department colleagues at the foundation. On the call, we might have um, many of your colleagues as organizers and volunteers, Andy, um, Bianto, Irina, John, and Mohammed. Um, I'm sure they're saying hi in the chat. And I then pass on to Taz, who will share more about the global contest itself. Thanks very much. Yeah, <clears throat> a few words about the contest design, because this is an, an open global contest, um, which we're looking to crowdsource um, the sound logo and work with one of our partners. So we'll just go into that now. Next slide, please. So the contest itself um, is based mostly on a lot of the previous logo contests that the Wikimedia movement have been integral uh, in, in creating. Um, but as it's a new kind of contest and that we're looking for sound, um, there are some new aspects as well. Um, so as I said, it's an open global contest. So it will be created on a WordPress portal, which actually means that members of the public and those that may not have a Wikimedia account uh, can participate. One other important aspect 
is because it's uh, an open global contest. We're very likely to get numerous submissions. And with that comes the need for a screening team uh, to ensure that we capture any aspects of uh, sub any, any submissions that are technically incorrect or could be seen as vandalism. So we're looking for a community screening team to help with that aspect early on um, in the contest. The final vote, which will be for the final 10 sound logos, will take place on Wikimedia Commons. Um, and there will be prizes uh, for the winner and for the other nine finalists as well, which we're finalising at the moment. So just a word on our technical partner for this project. We're working with um, an agency, a sonic agency called Massive Music, um, who have been making uh, sound logos and other sonic branding um, um, tools for the past 20 years. Uh, they're global leaders and they've been working with us for a fair few months, ensuring that the contest and all of the aspects behind the contest work and are legally sound. Next slide, please. So a bit more to where the community comes in. Um, we're going to have a selection committee who will be deciding with Massive Music exactly which 10 sound logos will go to the final vote. Um, our colleague uh, Murdad, who I'm sure many of you know, has been working hard behind the scenes to put together the selection committee. Um, and here, here are a few aspects of how the sound logo should sound, um, which is what we're calling the brief, and it will be included on the web portal as a criteria for entrance. So the sound logo should feel human, inspired, smart, and warm, all very emotive descriptors for the movement itself. Um, Three aspects, which are technical requirements, is that it should comprise of multiple layers, textures, or sounds. So that essentially means that there should be more than one sound, and each sound should happen and play back uh, one over the other. So we had a masterclass uh, session on Thursday with our partners, Massive Music. We went into all of the detail um, and provided some music production tools um, and instructions and guidance on how to do that. You'll be able to watch that masterclass very soon. Um, the, your sound logo submission should be between one and four seconds long, and it should only contain original sounds or sounds that are CC0 or public domain. So there are the main aspects of submissions. Next slide, please. Is that my one, Matoto? Uh, no. Okay. Sorry, I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Oh, can you hear me now? Yep. Awesome. Thanks, Taz. Um, so naturally, we um, we really want to make this a participatory process in um, in not just the contest design. We want it to uh, uh, indeed, and but also in the way that um, we were making decisions. Um, we uh, part of designing the contest, as um, Taz shared, uh, involved a range of community conversations. Um, that uh, that were led by Medard, who's in our movement communications team, and um, the the objective here was to really um, offer communities a chance to take in a lot of information about quite a complex and new way of seeking uh, a logo, a sound logo, um, and uh, we put all of this in a contest proposal um, in nine languages. Uh, on Meta and have it, had it for review over May and June, inviting suggestions and feedback on the talk page and in other forums, including an email. Uh, we also hosted uh, two dedicated virtual sessions um, that were part information sharing, um, as well as an introduction to some sonic concept. Um, 
and um, hearing these this uh, the results uh, just a snapshot of the results is um, for us this was an incredible milestone for the project because um, hearing many of these questions and comments allowed us to reflect um, and also make decisions for the next steps of the project. And all of this is documented on Meta. Um, we were looking out to hear where there was support and where there was no clear objection, um, allowing us to make um, uh, the immediate next steps um, and steps towards the completion of the project clear uh, while keeping you all updated. And the this big sort of feedback from the, the session was that there was quite a surprising and very good to know that oh, this is an exciting project. People are very excited that it's happening there and they increasingly want to get involved and want to find out how um, and that um, they wanted something that was that many people really wanted to reiterate was that conceptualizing and capturing and producing sounds is quite complex and takes time and that this process the contest itself should not be rushed. And so um, it's wonderful that we're here at Wikimania to give communities around the world a preview and a, a head start to conceptualizing and collaborating so that they have uh, almost a month and a half uh, a head start before the rest of the world um, can can join in. Um, same with the selection. You know, we there were comments around um, how it might be more difficult to make a selection of a sound, um, which is not the same as making, comparing two logos. Um, one has to listen um, and take it in. Um, and so we needed that voting period also to have some breathing room um, in the contest design. And lastly, in, in absolutely, in completely a Wikimedia way, this has to be a, a, a ways for people to collaborate. And so, we wanted, uh, we heard very clearly that um, um, people wanting to work or submit a sound um, should be given the chance to collaborate. Um, and so we uh, we found ways to uh, allow for that, including an open library um, that is on the contest page on Meta um, that has um, a forum for, for one to collaborate, but also resources to use um leading up to the contest open uh, and so the best part how do you get involved taz will share more you're muted taz can you hear me now yeah, sorry about that. I have a, uh, <laughs> have a plus one in the room. Um, so the team are currently working on the WordPress web portal, uh, which will allow us to receive, screen, and review submissions. We're also looking at how the vote will take place on Wikimedia Commons as well. Um, at the moment, my dad uh, is working on putting together a screening team. So if you are interested, and becoming a part of the screening team, uh, please email soundlogo, one word, at wikimedia.org. Um, as I mentioned before, my dad is also putting together the selection committee. Um, Matoto is working on global outreach with more of our colleagues uh, from the communications department at the foundation and also looking at promotion. Um, as mentioned, the workshop happened at Wikimania a couple of days ago and that will be available uh, for you to review very shortly. Um, the production of the contest promotion materials is also underway. So here's a, a timeline, a rough timeline. Um, so the submission period for you to submit your sound logo entrance will be from mid-September to mid-October. It will last roughly a month, so it's coming up soon. The final vote uh, will be open uh, for three weeks roughly from the end of November this year. There'll be a legal review where the foundation, um, our partners, Massive Music, um, and a musicologist, an independent musicologist, uh, will start their due diligence, copyright checks, contracting, and clearance, which will take a fair few weeks, but that's to ensure that the sound 
is unique, can be registered, and can represent all of the hard work that the Wikimedia community do every day. And we are aiming to announce the winner in early 2023. So that's a quick look ahead um, at what's coming up for the Sound Logo team. So ways for you to get involved. Here's just a few, but if you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, or suggestions, uh, please reach out uh, to the community liaisons and the team as well. So first things first, when it's available, watch the Sound Logo Masterclass. It's a very valuable. It goes through uh, the basics of Sound Logos, where Sound Logos came from and why they're so important now, least of all because many of us are online and many of us are using sound um, solely to gain knowledge. Um, so watch the Sound Logo Masterclass, uh, very valuable. Next, find and tag existing sounds that are uh, in the public domain or Create Commons Zero. We'll be, we'll be sharing a link to what we're calling the Sound Lab, which is the collaboration space that has lots of sounds um, for you to use on your submissions. Uh, and we're inviting people to uh, bring together a lot more. Think of concepts as well. What, how, how do you feel the Wikimedia movement could best be represented by sound? So we're asking you to conceptualize that. Take some time to think what sounds represent the Wikimedia movement best. And you can start sharing with your uh, community members and concepting together. Capture sounds. Uh, so capture sounds on your mobile phone. Or if you've got uh, a microphone and a laptop, perhaps you can capture sounds out and about. Um, that's a great way to uh, think about concepting and work your way towards a final sound. And then once the contest is open, submit your unique sound logo to the contest um, where we will be screening, reviewing, scoring, and selecting. Encourage others to submit sounds as well. This is very important because we're very, very keen for the Wikimedia community to submit sounds that represent their community. And then lastly, um, inquire to join the screening team because we need lots of people to review sounds um, we're expecting quite a few sounds, so it'd be great if the movement will be a part of that screening process too. So that's about it in terms of ways to get involved. Um, I think that may be the last slide. Yes, that is. So um, we're opening the floor for people to ask questions, share thoughts, fe feelings about the contest, etc. So we'll just have a look um, in the sidebar. Have there been and to questions? add, sorry, go on. To add, just want to say, a, you know, a heartfelt thank you to everyone who has taken the time to uh, familiarize themselves with the contest so far, from the early um, uh, essay that we wrote in November, right up to the consultations in May and June. We appreciate your enthusiasms, enthusiasm and your interest and your suggestions and look forward to more. I think the slides may have gone at one point, but we will be uploading these slides to Wikimedia Commons soon after right. this round table for everyone to review at their leisure.
Awesome. Yeah, I've just um, updated the link for the sound lab. I don't think it was working, but I think Mohammed and I have both dropped those links in there in the chat. Um, so we have a question from the Etherpad. Um, there's some skepticism about the initiative. One of the main objectives from uh, the commenter side is what exact usage of sound logo of Wikimedia is this going to be and in what situations? Right now I struggle to think of any. Okay, I think we can we can answer that um, from from a top line perspective. Um, so in, in the first instance, Matoto mentioned that the first use case for the sound logo um, is going to be for voice assistance. Um, in the, I think it may have been an earlier version, but we can certainly share some research um, that points to a proliferation of um, sound assistant uses or smart speakers, as they're often called, uh, which are used at home, like uh, um, the Amazon Echo, for example, um, and the I think Google Apple HomePod and, and things like that. So those smart speakers, as they're called colloquially, are used uh, quite readily around the world and, and the use um, is growing uh, exponentially. Um, and the research points to the fact that a very large percentage, um, and it has always been over 75% of particular searches, which are knowledge-based and fact-based, um, use Wikimedia content for their answers. Um, we, we have the research figures um, that we can share as mentioned but an awful lot of the time, more often than not, the the um, the Wikimedia content isn't identified as coming from Wikimedia projects. So we saw this as an opportunity to create something that can identify um, the uh, Wikimedia volunteers' hard work. Um, and this is just a start. The, the first use case is um, for that purpose, but it can of course be used for multiple uses, including, um, you know, on the many videos that the movement create that could signify and identify that they're part of the Wikimedia movement. It could be used on content outside, made outside of the movement as well, alongside the logos that already exist um, as part of the Wikimedia visual identity. Um, so I hope that answers your question. If you want to add anything there, Matoto? Thanks for the question. Um, and just to add one more resource that would have a, an exhaustive list of use cases and some of the research that Taz has mentioned, you can find on the FAQ tab on the Sound Logo Meta page. Um, and I will add it here. There was also a request for the session on Thursday, which I actually just saw pop up in the feed loop. Uh, there were a few technical issues, but I'll, I'll share it um, now. But please be sure if anyone would like any resources or assistance, please email soundlogo at wikimedia.org. That's a great place to access um, not only your community liaisons, of which there are five, but also the, the project team direct. So let me find the link quickly um, and I'll share that in the chat. Check if there's any more questions. Right, so I think I have found a YouTube link. So I'm going to drop that in the chat if anyone would like to uh, 
review the Sound Lego Masterclass from Thursday. I just double check that's the right link. Not sure you saw the question in the queue, um, Taz, around the, the criteria the screening team will use to utilize, uh, to judge the, the sound. Um, or is that all, all in the video? We can. I think it's the two minute delay between um, YouTube and Feedlib. And so we're good to proceed. I think we're good. No, they didn't. Ah, okay. Do you see the question in the q and I also drop in. Um... You know what, let me just write a comment.
Um, it's quite simple, and, and the, the slide should be on screen now. It's essentially the last three uh, bullet points on that. So the screening team will look to hear if there are at least two sounds that overlap with one another to create a layered um, composition. They'll also listen to see if the sound is between one and four seconds long. And they'll look to hear if they can recognize any sounds or sounds that may not be original or part of the public domain. But this is, of course, um, this would require further research and um, for uh, the team to speak to the person that submitted, submit, submitted it. They will provide rationale and justification for their sound as well. Um, but further to that, the screening team will um, log on to the web portal through the back end. And as screeners, they will have a list of questions that if the answer is yes to one of them, which pertains to the criteria, all they need to do is tick it. So the criteria is there. And we'll be sharing that criteria um, with anyone that would like to apply to the screening team and they can make a decision. Um, as to whether they would like to do it. It's, it's very straight, very straightforward, very easy, um, not, not different to anything that Wikimedians do uh, on, on our projects every day. Um, the main bulk of the questions is to do with vandalism, because we, we do need to screen to va for vandalism. So there'll be questions, um, could it be perceived as being offensive or anything like that, or uh, yeah. not suitable in representing Wikimedia? But it is very straightforward. We'll, we'll share the criteria very soon. I think there was a question from Tommy, which I'll just scroll back up. It says, Wikipedia is mostly about reading and images. There ought to be an audio side and other sensory perceptions also to it. Why not being welcome to the Wikipedia homepage, homepage by a characteristic sound? Make sure it can be turned off though. Um, as being part of this project, I would wholeheartedly agree because sound is one of my one of my life passions. Um, that it would be very useful in ensuring that sound um, goes some way to representing Wikimedia content. But that, of course, is something that the community uh, would need to rally around and agree in happening. But of course, it's something. Um, it's a use case that the sound that's chosen. Uh, could be utilized for, but I, I wholeheartedly agree with you, Tommy. Just going back through the chat list. Apologies for the technical difficulties earlier. I think there was a question that I may have missed earlier. It says, Taz talked about a session held on Thursday. Can I get the link? I shared the response but I need to understand how the sound log is done. There are volunteers to organize basic training. Um, that is possible, no doubt. As many of you may know, um, the person that organized the community and is doing a lot of the research are going to be made available to the key. So I'm, I'm currently working on, um, I think, four um, training sessions for volunteers uh, between now and the submission window uh, for Sound Logos closing. So the answer is yes. So we're just organizing, we're figuring out when they should take place to ensure that anyone in the world agrees Uh, sound logo at Wikimedia um, to express your interest and as soon as it's available we'll announce um, on the meta where else on the community liaison will communicate um, through telegram and the other communication channels I see there's some quite a few people who've joined since we began, about 
43 attendants on Feedly, probably more on YouTube. For those who are just joining, this was a short introduction uh, and overview of the Sound Logo project, um, sharing uh, steps we have taken so far, consultations we've had with members of the Wikimedia communities around the world and the results, as well as um, the plans to launch the contest in the, the coming month uh, during September. And so any questions you have, if you've reviewed some of the material on Meta um, uh, or you attended the masterclass uh, during the week on the first day of Wikipedia, please share your questions here. We still have time with you. Um, and so this is, uh, this is your chance. Um, so there's a, a question on the Q&A tab, or more of a comment. It sounds local to destinations like South Africa could be super unique. Imagine um, there could be a huge amount of traffic. There can be a huge impact for visually impaired and other. Thanks very much, Andrea. Um, yes, for sure. Um, I would definitely, I'm going to post the link to the masterclass uh, that we did on Thursday again for everyone to see how the, the craft of creating sound logos differs to music production and, and the, the, sta the standards of music, uh, creation of music concepting. It's not very different, but there are certain aspects. Uh, we spoke about uh, the sound not particularly pertaining to one specific culture, but more of a global uh, movement. Um, and Joe, who led the uh, music production and technical aspect of the masterclass, um, shared without drawing that much attention to it, <laughs> a very, very smart way to take a sound from a very specific locale. So we used an African drum and then he, he added things to it and, and added effects and manipulated it to give it uh, a more global sound, as we're calling it, which is very smart. So um, I would love to see um, in the notes, in the rationale for sound logo submissions that they, you know, participants started with sounds that are local to them and they went through a process to change and manipulate those sounds to give them a much more global sound to represent the global movement. So it starts with them and it, uh, sort of radiates to the wider movement, which I think is a beautiful story. So I think we may have a few more questions. I'll just go through. Another comment from Tommy. That's amazing, Tommy. I would, if this is a question and a request, if, if you are open to collaborating with uh, members of the Wikimedia community who may not have as much uh, experience in audio, audio design as you do, it would be amazing if you could offer your services uh, to help those that may have, uh, you know, may have ideas and concepts uh, that they'd like to submit, but don't, may not necessarily have the experience to do so. So uh, I'll be hoping to see an email from you coming to uh, our inbox at soundlogo at wikimedia.org. Another question from Chimari. Can people who are not Wikipedians join in the Soundlogo contest? Yes, they can. It's an open global contest. So anyone uh, can submit a sound. Um, <clears throat> it's as simple as that. We've we've made it an open global contest um, in order to get as many submissions as possible because we know that uh, you know our colleague Tommy has uh, experience in audio production design, but perhaps not that many people in the in the movement do. So we're opening it uh, to allow for submissions, and of course the most important thing that is that we have Wikimedia volunteers on the selection committee to decide. Uh, which sounds make it through to the to the final 10. So although it is open, uh, no sounds will make it 
through to the final uh, without um, a green light, as it were, from the volunteers. And uh, additionally, since the voting platform will be on Commons, it will require anyone wanting to vote to uh, sign to sign up and log in and have a login. And so, um, while it is really open to everyone, the voting portion of the Sound Logo project, the real decision of between the ten finalists, is most likely going to, going to be made by uh, Wikimedians who have a login. Another comment from Tony, having uh, AI choose and manipulate the sounds might add some neutrality to the logo, I imagine. Uh, that would be an amazing scenario. Um, this is just my personal opinion, but um, AI, I think, is still relatively uh, fraught with uh, glitches, I would say. <laughs> it's a lovely suggestion. I would... What I, I would love to see the sound logo that is chosen by AI and the sound logo that is chosen by the community. Um, of course, just for my own personal uh, personal preference. Um, it's very encouraging to see um, here in the in the, the attendees, uh, familiar faces, um, people who have joined either the masterclass or the community consultations or have commented on the talk page. Again, appreciate your support and your recommendations and comments and suggestions. Um, please keep them coming. A question from Goodness in the chat. Any sound production app you can recommend? Um, so I'd certainly recommend creating the sound on a desktop uh, or a laptop computer and the software that I'd recommend to use is called Ableton Live Lite. So it is, it's free software, it's incredibly powerful, it's seen as uh, being uh, industry standard for uh, beginners who would like to create sound and music. So I'll just, I'll drop it in the chat now i'll drop a link to it in the chat if your if your preference is to use open source software there is a program called audacity which is a li little bit more limited um, in how you can create um, and we will also have a list of resources tools and software on the web portal as well but if you search for any um, daw uh, which stands for digital audio workspace um, have a look through uh, the DAWs that are on offer and yeah take some time to do some research read reviews maybe download some have a play see see which one you like um, but again this the sound logo masterclass is a great place to start uh, it teaches you the basics on how to create a sound logo from scratch mm. We have about a minute left, um, just so anybody who's been drafting their question and hasn't posted it yet, please do so now and we can answer here. Um, if you didn't get time to share your question here, again, um, there are various social media groups, WhatsApp, Telegram, and I think Signal as well, and Instagram, and uh, soundlogo at wikimedia.org. Um, for any questions you have uh, about what we've shared here today. Yeah, we've got another question from Suyash. What about the sounds not produced with the help of any computer software, MIDI, etc.? Any any sounds that are what we would call naturally acoustic, so sounds that are recording out, recorded out in the open world that are controlled by MIDI, and in short, MIDI um, is a control language uh, that keyboards, MIDI keyboards used to trigger sounds. So you could record a bird tweeting outside, for example, 
and you'd put it in the digital audio workstation and map it to a key on a keyboard and MIDI will be able to play the different scales of that bird sound. So you could have a really high pitched bird sound or a really low pitched bird sound like my voice. That's what MIDI is. So as long as, as long as the sound that you are creating is original that you've recorded or is a CC zero sound, MIDI's fine. That's perfectly okay. You can record and use as you wish. So I think that's us out of time. Thanks, everyone. Have a lovely rest of your Wikimania. Um, and be sure to email us uh, and the liaisons on the email that you can see there. Thank you. Thanks.